Hi Spring fans, welcome to another installment of Spring Tips. This is our last in the series of looking at all things at controller. Obviously we've covered a lot. We've looked at HTTP REST APIs, HTTP uh, MVC sort of web, you know, server-side rendered uh, UI uh, endpoints. We've looked at uh, REST, we've looked at uh, um, uh, WebSockets, we've looked at GraphQL, we've looked at RSocket, uh, and we've only just begun to sort of scratch the surface here. As you can see, and I've used, as you've seen already, the at controller component model is really, really powerful, and it's familiar, which gives it all the more power. It's a bit of a, a force multiplier in that respect. You can do more armed with just the knowledge of one when you work with another uh, component model based on at controller. Now, in this last uh, episode, uh, I want to look at some things that um, I think are apl applicable to all of them, not least of which is how to sort of uh, distinguish one from the other, right? How to use one uh, in a way that's more notationally obvious in your code. Obviously, this is a, a short episode, and that's okay, because I want to I want to wrap this series up with a nice little bow. This will be the last uh, uh, in this series, but I think I'll do some deep dives looking at individual topics that we've covered in this series. As always, I've uh, I've really enjoyed putting these together for you. I hope you enjoyed it. If you if you liked them, let me know in the comments, of course, and uh, enjoy today's episode. One thing that may not be immediately obvious is that these things can all live together. So I've shown you a number of different approaches using controllers, uh, but you can actually mix and match, right? There's no reason that these things are orthogonal to each other. You can actually you use HTTP uh, views and REST endpoints in the same code base. You can use RSocket and the WebSocket support in the same code base, etc. Um, and uh, there are some things you should be aware of when you do that. Let's take a look at all of them together now. Let's open this up in the IDE. Okay, I have on my on my class path uh, support for building HTTP endpoints and for RSocket endpoints. So I could say a controller uh, response body. class HTTP controller, right? And I can do at controller, um, rsocket controller. And you know, probably, I, I probably I'm not gonna break things down in terms of the technology, so I need at least a domain type of some sort. So let's say I have a record here. I forgot to use Java 17, didn't I? Oh, I did. Okay, I'll say record greeting string name. Okay. All right, so now I've got our socket controller. I've got a greeting and HTTP controller. Now, if you're doing uh, domain driven design, then it's very logical that you'd keep the greetings functionality and all the different controllers for that in the same package. So it would be fine to have the distinction be the technology. You could say, our socket controller versus HTTP controller because it, it's assumed that it's about greetings because it's in the greetings package, right? Um, that makes a lot more sense, a thousand times more sense than using, you know, design by role or you know, package by by role. So if you have a, a package called controllers, don't do that. Just stop, go back and undo it, put it back. Uh, you know, isolate your code by by feature, right? Is it the greetings? Is it the order service? Is it the customer service? Is it what? What is it? You know, uh, and then therein you can keep the domain model, the service. Uh, the, the repositories, the controllers, all that kind of stuff that belongs in the same package. Anyway, that's a, that's a whole other Oprah. We can have that discussion later. All I'm trying to say is you can have these different controllers in the same code base. Uh, in this case, it's a little redundant though, right? Look at that. Um, and so, you know, you, it's probably fine just to call it the RSocket controller and HTTP controller if it's, 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 if it's in the same package. If it's not, then you want to be extra explicit. You can say greetings RSocket controller. But one thing that it's kind of annoying is that these annotations don't really tell you what kind of type this is. You have to scan the name, you know? So uh, I just want you to remember that you can actually create your own annotations in Spring and Spring will make it work. So for example, so we're going to, re we're going to build our own uh, annotation here called GraphQL controller. And it's an alias for at controller, okay? And there you go, that's it. That annotation, you know, you could, you could use it uh, with GraphQL. You could also create one here called rsocket controller, right? rsocket controller. And that's just this, so 
alias for that. So it's interface R socket controller. Well, of course, the annotation should be in its own uh, its own package, right? The stereotype annotation, because otherwise it it, it uh, conflicts with the uh, what I'm doing here, right? Uh, and by the way, this we already have at rest controller, right? But we don't have MVC controller, so you might do that as well. You could say at MVC controller, and that would just be, you know, that would this would be rest controller. Rest controller is actually two annotations. It's response body and controller, uh, and that's fine, right? So greeting, greetings. HTTP REST controller, but then what about MVC controller? That would just be the default, right? Greetings MVC, or sorry, greetings HTTP MVC controller, right? That kind of thing. Uh, and then what about GraphQL controller? And, you know, you, at some point you can start reducing this. So HTTP greetings GraphQL controller, and then RSocket controller, right? Class greeting RSocket controller, etc. right? Don't need that. Good, so you can, so the, this is the power of the spring uh, component models that you can create your own stereotype annotations, your own meta annotations that are themselves just annotated with other annotations. This is extra, this the alias four, uh, is it allows you to pass through all the attributes on your annotation to the underlying thing. So if you have an attribute called value, it gets passed through to the controller's version of value, right? Uh, and if you want to do more fields like that, you can you just use alias four, which is very cool. So now you can actually have your own, uh, you know, controller annotations as well, if only for the clarity of the uh, uh, of the reader, right? It doesn't, you don't have to do that. In fact, I'm not even sure if that adds a lot of value because remember, you've got all this stuff here. So maybe, you know, maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's redundant, you know. And so with all that, we now have a sense of all the different things you can do with controllers. And of course, this is just the beginning, right? Uh, there's no reason somebody couldn't put together another controller uh, hierarchy, uh, uh, you know, supporting another protocol. Heck, I expect we probably will at some point. I have no idea what, mind you, but we could. Uh, it's one of the nice things about this component model is that it's just POJO centric. So it really doesn't uh, have to change all that much to make it work, right? We we have introduced best of breed annotations for particular technologies. You saw we used at argument for uh, for uh, GraphQL. We used at destination variable for WebSockets and for RSocket. We used at, at path variable for uh, HTTP uh, MVC and HTTP REST uh, and so on. But you know, basically, the, and, and we've got stereotype annotations for the mappings. Uh, we've got Git mapping and message mapping and uh, query mapping and so on. But basically, if you understand one, it's not hard to figure out what to look for in the other. And that's the goal here is to have that consistency. What do you think, Spring fans? You get something out of that? I hope you did. I hope you got something out of this whole series. I'll have links to all the episodes in the comments, uh, in, the, in the notes for this episode. Um, as always, thanks so much for watching. This will be the last episode for me this this year, 2021. Uh, it's obviously, it's middle of December uh, as I record this and, uh, you know, it's time to kick back and let the holidays roll on in. Uh, to all to all of you who celebrate, happy holidays uh, and and uh, happy new year. I, and we'll see you, you know, very early in the in January uh, 2022, the brand new year. Uh, for those of you who l read the This Week in Spring blog, that will keep going, of course. And uh, I might even keep doing the podcast, probably will. But but this, this Spring Tip series, I'm going to that's on pause for a few weeks. I'm going to take some uh, little R and R to enjoy time with my family. Thanks so much for watching. As always, see you next year.